Targets for renewable energy. What is the proposal from the European Commission um, to, to increase the ambition level regarding the targets for renewable energy? First off, we'd have to get the definition straight on what we're talking about. Uh, what are we talking about when we talk about renewable energy? What are we talking about when we talk about energy uh, in general? Ob obviously, electricity is part of that, but we're also talking molecules. So all fuels that we use either on the road or maybe at home. This is a gas boiler for, for uh, house uh, heating. Um, so it's really the combination of electrons and molecules and the total of that that we use as end users. For the nerds, we'll look at gross final energy consumption. And gross final energy consumption includes all energy that is consumed by end users, energy used by the, by the energy sector itself, and distribution losses. What percentage of this total is currently renewable? A good question. <laughs> I've prepared a graph for that. Um, actually, in 2010, it was 40% of the total was renewable. Uh, and at this point, or in 2019, I should say we were at 20%. If you extrapolate that trend towards 2030, you, and that is not the best way to forecast, I understand that, but um, uh, if you extrapolate that trend towards 2030, you arrive at 26%. So what is the current target for renewable energy? The current target is 30%. So, Again, extrapolation is not a very good forecasting method, but we're undershooting that target based on this mediocre forecasting method. The European Commission, or Franz, Franz Timmermans, who is heading the climate initiatives of the European Commission, uh, he is proposing to increase this target to 40%. So 40% of all this energy that is used by consumers and other end users, the energy sector itself and distribution losses, 40% of it should be renewable. So we can basically say that we're currently halfway to that. But you can also see from this graph that we really need a change in the trend. We really have to speed up over the next 10 years to, to make this happen. Again, it would be a good thing if ne negotiations are short, but the, because that would actually mean that the, the curve would be slightly flatter, that our, the challenge becomes a, a bit easier to, uh, to overcome. But we need a big speed up uh, in the uptake of renewable energy. And th the key question is, of course, how? How are we going to do that? Because this is the current energy mix, the gross inland energy consumption in the EU between 1990 and 2018. And somewhere in the middle you see dark red, and that is the renewable share in the mix. You see that it has grown uh, quite substantially over these decades but uh, it's not nearly close to 40% to, to yet. Um, you see the blue, which is oil and petroleum products, basically anything coming out of a refinery. You see natural gas in pink. Um, again, red was the renewables, so solid fuel, fossil fuels, the dark green, which is probably uh, coal, uh, and the light green is nuclear heat. So how do we move to 40% in this, in this mix? Well, uh, a very good... Um, uh, 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 mechanism or method to, to make this happen is the Trias Energetica or a three-step approach to make our energy mix sustainable. The first step should always be to minimize energy consumption. Because you don't have to make ener energy renewable that you don't use, right? If we, if we fully um, exploit energy and any energy efficiency uh, opportunity, we actually make the challenge a lot easier for ourselves. So that's, that should always be the natural starting point, and that's also what these EU proposals are luckily radiating. The second step should then be with the energy, with the remaining energy, to introduce more sustainable energy generation to that mix as much as possible. And then finally, efficient use of fossil fuel. And efficient may mean uh, um, of, of course, that you don't waste it, that you use the uh, least harmful fossil fuels or maybe carbon capture and storage solutions where you still use fossil fuels, but no extra greenhouse gases are emitted to the atmosphere. So the mix of these and the stepwise approach here should get us to the goal. 
Now there are many, many technologies and types of infrastructure that have to be developed to, um, uh, to make this happen. Here are a few hydrogen fuel cells, electrolyzers, geothermal power, alternative fuels, CCUS, floating energy, energy storage. These are all key themes that we at ABN Amro Bank focus on. We have in-depth knowledge, databases, financing models, and also a bi-weekly market update on these key themes. If you would like to know more, if you would like to receive these bi-weekly, so every two weeks you get a market update on developments on these technologies, um, then uh, via LinkedIn, mail or call Remco Jonkins. You see his contact details here. Um, of course, there is a broader team um, that, um, that um, uh, services the energy sector, but if you want to uh, receive these bi-weekly market updates and be, um, be constantly updated on new developments in the market, contact Remco either via LinkedIn, mail or by telephone. Um, that was a quick uh, notification. Could be, um, these are obviously critical technologies to make the whole system work in the end. Um, short summary for this chapter on renewable energy. Um, uh, we go from 30% from a 30% target to 40% in 2030. So big step up there. We're halfway now, approximately 20% in 2019. And step one is energy efficiency. Okay, um, let's see if any questions came in. Uh, I see also questions about the previous chapters. Why, why are the differences between e ESR targets between um, between countries? Well, there, there, there are probably a lot of reasons to differentiate, but uh, um, the, the obviously you also look at what are what are the means of countries to to reduce their emission uh, to emissions. What are the, is their starting point? Uh, and probably there is also some political element to it. Uh, and this obviously will also be strong. Um, this will probably be also be very important uh, pieces to negotiate over over the next few, hopefully months, but maybe years. Um, who does what? And um, if the more affluent countries are probably able to support more stringent targets. That is one, but there are probably a lot of arguments flying back and forth for, for this differentiation. Um, there are some sectors where technological advantage do not go as fast as desired. Will targets rely a lot on technological advances or not? How could we circumvent this challenge? Um, to an extent. Because um, 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 uh, these uh, targets, how, how does technological advancements happen? Uh, technological advances happens, happens in R&D labs, but especially but just to get going, right? To get the first projects, the first pilot plans, the first scaled up solution on the ground and working. And from that experience, scale up can quickly happen as we saw in the wind industry. Packages like these, and also we'll so soon see in the other chapters, carbon pricing mechanisms and, and other pricing uh, instruments will actually make sure that the business as usual technology will become more expensive uh, closing the gap between the current technology and maybe the cost level uh, associated to the, 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 the new green technology, then member states may decide to cover the re remaining gap uh, with subsidy. And as scale up of these technologies happens, the cost price of the new technology will, come, will probably come down. Hopefully it will. And well, as the balloon uh, of, of emission credits tightens over the years, the price of these business as usual technologies just increases. So it's definitely technological development, but I would state not just technological development in R&D labs, but it's technological development, but just get getting going by getting the first projects online, getting the experience in, letting the market um, feel and understand the risks. And from there, you know, you can extrapolate. Um, if the target for renewable energy and transport now switches to a greenhouse gas emission reduction one, how does it interact overlap with an ETS for road transport? I save that question for the actual chapter on, uh, on this. After the break, we'll cover the ETS for road transportation uh, and it will probably be, become a lot more clear. 
Um, is biomass considered a renewable energy source by the EU? Um, very good question. Biomass can be highly unsustainable, but it can be sustainable. There are many solutions that we actually need because um, um, biomass is, 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 it comes in a lot of, lot, lot of forms and there are a lot of technologies and a lot of application methods to use this. Obviously, you don't want rainforests to be cut down uh, and then the, the trees to be burned in, let's say, coal-fired power plants, co-firing. Um, that will be highly unsustainable. But there are definitely re residue or waste streams of biomass that can be used to good effect to replace fossil fuels. Um, because waste and residual waste uh, from uh, w of biogenic origin uh, would have degraded anyhow and released any greenhouse gases in the atmosphere uh, soon anyhow. But, you know, we, obviously there, there have to be rules, and there are. Uh, and we, in any case, case by case, you'd have to look at it very specifically, whether it's a sustainable solution or a non-sustainable solution. So scalability of biomass is always a big issue. Um, is it necessary or ideal that the negotiations end prior to COP26? It would be ideal if they end tomorrow. Uh, so that would be the short, that would be the short answer. But honestly, I don't think they will end before that because there are so many um, uh, technical, political issues at stake here. Um, many countries probably going to take out a, a fierce negotiation position. I hope it's very short, maybe next week, but probably not. Um, there are some debates lobbying on what we included in renewable energy. Is it just solar, wind, hydro, or also including natural gas, nuclear, biomass, which, although better than fossil fuels, are technically not renewable? Yeah, this is, um, I think, another... Um, uh, discussion also relates to the EU taxonomy on what we deem sustainable uh, or not. Um, uh, so uh, for now, it's, I think, important to understand that we, we increase this renewable energy um, uh, target from 30 to 40 percent. At the same time, we apply more stringent CO2 reduction targets and adjust our policy mechanisms like the ETS to it. Uh, the EU taxonomy on what is sustainable and how, what you can count towards those targets is probably going to drive uh, what sources, uh, and especially the more um, uh, maybe dubious ones or that are somewhat in a gray area, um, are going to be critical there. Um, there has been some development in agrivoltaics, a combination of agriculture and solar power generation. How do you, how do you foresee the potential of this solution? Well, I, in my view, as much as possible, um, uh, solar uh, panels should be placed on roofs. Uh, probably is not going to be enough or go fast enough. So you 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 should look at uh, also on uh, maybe on land, but also floating uh, could be uh, could be a great solution. Already applied a lot in the Netherlands, also in Singapore, big floating solar parks, for example, on. Um, ponds where, where uh, sand or, or, or other resources are, so not uh, recreational ponds, but that are probably more industrial sites with water where, where you can put uh, floating solar panels on. And then maybe also um, uh, multi-use of, uh, of agricultural space, if possible. I mean, um, if you can use the, the same space for two or three uses at the same time, that would probably also always be advantageous and something to look at. Um, what do you mean by energy efficiency being step one? Shouldn't we be pro progressing the three elements of the triangle? Yes, we should do all of them at the same time. But um, it's very important not to... Energy efficiency is often overlooked, I would say. So uh, in terms of thinking, in terms of prioritizing, uh, it would always be a good idea to first look, how can I reduce my energy footprint? How, wh what energy actually do I not need? So also for renovation projects or whatever you don't want. Um, let's, uh, uh, very simple uh, um, uh, example, but you could, for example, uh, have a big neighborhood or a village and uh, put in geothermal power with a certain renewable energy output um, and just supply it to the same houses unrenovated but then afterwards, you start renovating the houses and suddenly you don't need as much power or the, not the volume or capacity of the geothermal well you needed in the first place. So you get dimensioning 
problems, right? Why not install a smaller geothermal well uh, and at the same time um, renovate and make these houses more energy efficient? This is a very basic example, but energy efficiency is, I think, uh, is, I, I think, key, because if there is potential, and energy efficiency potential is typically very cheap as well, so also from an economic or societal point of view, um, it's very logical to start there. And in term, if you look at houses, houses typically also become a lot, less, a lot more comfortable if you work on energy efficiency. Uh, no, no cold draft, for example, when you sit on the couch. <laughs> um, where do plastics feature in, the, in this whole picture? While it may not lead to direct CO2 emissions, it is a big part of moving away from the fossil. Yeah, um, I'm standing here in circle of um, a circular pavilion. Circularity is very important. Uh, alternative. Um, uh, using alternative uh, cleaner materials, although this re uh, regulatory package focuses mostly on the energy transition and less on, on the materials and circularity discussion. So um, not a lot on that, but um, I mean, any uh, producer that uses fossil fuels or emits a lot of CO2 in the process, they will, they will probably feel the consequences of this, of this proposal. So it will definitely help or be an element in the transition there as well. Uh, do you have a breakdown between the impact of the measure to reach the target from 20 to 40 percent? Energy efficiency, 50 percent. Sustainable energy generation, 30 percent. No, I don't have that. I don't have that breakdown. I'm sorry. No. Just being honest here. <laughs> um, okay. That was the end of the renewable energy chapter. Keep sending in the questions. Thank you very much. Good questions.